Here you open to 2.6 big blinds with pocket sevens. And, you know, that's that's fine and good. I mean, it, whenever you rate, make those 2.5 big blind raises, it's only going to hurt you whenever you have your the junk end of your range, because your opponents are going to be shoving over all of your bet sizes regardless. Here with pocket sevens facing a nicely sized overshove. This is probably going to be a, ha a hand something like sevens, eights, nines, tens, ace, jack, ace, queen, ace, ten. And against that range, you have a pretty easy fold with sevens, so good job there. I would consider raising with the ten nine suited, but I would probably end up folding as you do. This is not a good situation to raise in general. Ace King, on the other hand, is a very good hand to raise. So you make a min raise, and you do get shoved on it. As you see here, this doesn't cost you any money because you're calling, but say you had Ace Six instead and decided to open for whatever reason, or any any bluff. Say you decide to open any bluff here, you would have lost less chips than if you made it 3,000. So easy call with Ace King. It looks like you disconnected in this tournament a bit. I, I don't know if that's entirely true, but in my hand history review, I'm missing a few... Um, a few hands coming up, so let me know what happened there. I ideally, you don't want to blind off in poker tournaments. That's a pretty big disaster. Here you make it 3k again. Okay, right here you need to win about 40% of the time to break even. And we can do some math and figure this out really fast. So this guy's shoving from early position for a medium-sized starting stack. Um, so he's probably shoving a pretty wide range. Um, certainly any pair, certainly most Broadway hands, probably a lot of suited ace type hands. Let's just pretend he's shoving something like this. This may or may not be accurate, but it's close enough. We'll see that you with Queen Tenergram went about 42% of the time. So this is relatively close to break even. And I think if we make your opponent's range even wider, it's probably actually not going to help you that much because the hands that we're adding are not actually good for for you. So if we make it even a touch wider, I think your equity is going to probably stay about the same. Well, it does go up a little bit. So I guess this is this is close. Um, in close spots, I tend to fold, but I have no problem with calling, assuming you think the guy is shoving a wide range. Of course, he's shoving jack-10 suited, so we don't really learn anything about, about his range, but it's good to know that at least he's shoving kind of wide. All right, I think this is a mistake right here. I think this is actually a pretty big mistake. I would much prefer a call here. I know that some players always um, shove and some players always call. As a default, I think calling raises that are bigger than something like six big blinds or shoves that are big, bigger than six big blinds is usually going to be optimal because you want to be able to fold... You want to be able to call here something like pocket sevens and then fold with one of these guys' shoves, or call with ace jack and fold with one of these guys' shoves. I mean, you're probably not going to in this situation, but say you had 70,000 chips instead, and you have ace queen, and you call, and then this player, uh, Pierre, shoves, you'd want to be able to fold that. So I would tend to call here, especially with hands like aces, you want to induce action from these guys. And now by shoving, you're forcing these guys to have a hand, and they can never really make a play either. You always want to give them the option to make a play, but unfortunately, you take that away from them. You shouldn't be concerned with getting outdrawn when you have aces. You definitely want to get all in versus as many people as possible. Okay, so here it goes a raise, and you like to three bet, which is fine. And you get cold four bets. So it gets back to you, you need to win 40% of the time, and ace eight suited is not going to do it. So you have to fold. Again, I would make the men raise for the reasons we discussed earlier. You don't get the greatest flop in the world. I'd probably make it something like 5,200 to save chips. I'm not planning on going with my hand at this point. So I would I would want to bet as small as possible to get the job done. I would probably go ahead and 3-bet this guy again. We, I mean, we know that last hand, you, or last orbit, you 3-bet and then had to fold to a shove. But that's okay. I, I think it's perfectly fine to go ahead and 3-bet the guy again. This is a hand where... 3-betting is almost mandatory. There's there's nothing really 
else you can do with that hand besides 3-bet, because it's a pretty strong hand. You don't want to fold. I mean, Ace-10 in this spot's pretty similar. I would I would definitely look to 3-bet this. Uh, folding is kind of absurd, because your hand's pretty good. Calling is a little bit shaky, because your hand's not great. Uh, you have too many chips to shove, so... Yeah, I would definitely make it... a 3-bet there. So two spots where I certainly would have 3-bet that you did not take. That's certainly worth mentioning. It seems like you really haven't done anything too out of line in this tournament so far. And that's not necessarily bad, but it is something to be aware of. I mean, if you're never out of line, you are probably not taking all the opportunities you get. Here you call a queen-9, you get a bad flop. I mean, I'm okay with the calling with king-9, but again, just be careful with that type of thing, because whenever you do flop top pair, it's always a very tricky situation. So it looks like a lot of raised folding going on at this point. Alright, so you raise and you get shoved on. I mean, of course you're going to call here with Ace-King, but I don't think this situation is quite as good as it looks, because you are against a second position shover. You have been fairly active. I mean, your opponents don't know that you've been active with hands like ace-king, but you have been active, so I think you can definitely expect this guy to open a, or to shove a pretty wide range. But, you know, as I said, this, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't know he had queens, but I, I assumed he probably had a pretty good range. And you win, so it's always nice to win your flips. You're crushing on your flips thus far. And they keep giving you aces. As long as you keep getting aces, you're probably not going to have too tough of a time. All right, queen five suited. This is a cool spot where I would probably go ahead and raise, but if you think your opponent's going to limp re-raise you, then calling is definitely ideal, or checking is definitely ideal. If your opponent checks the flop, you should pretty much always bet, and when he bets, you should probably fold. And the reason I would like raising pre-flop is to take this play away from him, the limp bet. You don't want to let him limp in and then bet the flop and then win it every time. Here you min-raise and fold. Again, this is a good spot to min-raise, but... Notice if you made it 7,500, you would have lost an extra 1,500 chips, and that's not what you want to happen. Here you open pocket fives and elect to check. And... Like I mentioned earlier, hand, flops that come with two two big cards or two mish cards like Queen 9x, Jack 8x, especially like Jack 10x, Jack 9x, Queen 10x, those are flops where someone is going to have something in the hand most of the time, and if it's not you, it's probably your opponent. So be aware of that. These are flops where you can check fold, but they're also flops where you could certainly continuation bet. So be aware that betting's fine. The problem with checking is that Whenever you check, your opponent's going to fire very frequently, and then that's that's not good for you. Um, I think checking behind out of position is a, lo or is a little bit worse than checking behind in position, because in position you can at least try to get closer to showdown, but out of position, you're going to check, your opponent's going to bet, you're going to fold, and you're going to lose, and that's not, not really the ideal way to play the hand, but I guess it's, it's not so bad. All right, so your first light shove, this guy opens and you rip it in, and I think this is okay. I think you have perhaps a bit too many chips, but, you know, this is fine. I, I mean, I, I would prefer if you had something like 40k. Anything more than 40k starts to become a situation where you risk too many chips to win too few, and that's not where you want to be. So anything more than 40k starts to become a little bit risk-heavy. And because of that, perhaps a small 3-bet's better or even a fold. If I was sitting in your situation here, I probably would have folded. But I certainly don't fault you at all for uh, for shoving here. I think the shove is fine. 